All right, we are back here with another sideshow episode three of the Pangolin. We're going to dive into the CD underbelly, but before we do so, we're going to pour one out to Roman Juan Aguilera to start the episode off. Right. Salud. Hey, I finally figured out what the, the our theme's opening song kind of resembles. The state of bliss, and that's right. We are breaking oh. down episode three of the penguin on hbo max titled bliss it came out october 6th my name is adam that's terry as Yay! always now uh, yeah, we are uh we're diving in deep into this one really excited i think this is probably one of my favorite episodes of the show so far every episode's been really good and stellar we really get a shining light on victor and kind of the uh, you know, post traumatic stress that he does have from the ending of the Batman, we can see his side of things, which at first I didn't realize it was a flashback. And then I was like, wait a second, holy cow, that just happened. But we're going to dive, talk about that a little bit later. Uh, Terry, quick thoughts before you, we jump into it. Yeah, there's so much in this episode, and uh, it it's fascinating because it feels like I like guess one of the shortest synopsis is synopses synopsis Synop- short of summaries yeah. i wrote Syn- synopsis i don't think it's synopsis <laughs> but try. but that's just because everything is like jam-packed into into these scenes and it's a lot of characterization which is going to make it really fun to talk about but let's do it let's jump into this it is the penguin episode three and it is entitled bliss The episode starts with us getting some backstory on Vic, how his family was killed in the flood, and he has a girl out there somewhere. Meanwhile, in the present, Oz discovers the new drug is derived from mushrooms and came from Arkham. No wonder Sophia knows about it. Oz sets up a meeting with the Triads, who are not on great terms with the Falcons. But thanks to Oz's dirt on VT, their plot gets backing from within the family, and Sophia and Oz get their sit down with the leader of the triads, Fang Zhao. While all this is happening, Vic is having a dilemma. Does he stay with Oz or risk it all and follow his girl to California? Vic is afraid Oz won't let him leave, but also wondering if he should. The meeting with the triads takes place at their club, so the product can be tested, and Vic is the bag man. The meeting goes great. The triads make the deal, and Oz discovers Vic is thinking of leaving. Oz tells him he's free to go if he wants, but he doesn't think he wants to. Vic leaves. He takes Oz's car and goes to the bus station, where he watches his girl get on the bus without him. Vic chooses to stay. Oz and Sophia are debriefing their victory and their history when Nadia Maroney rolls up and calls Oz out on working both sides. Oz is on his knees pleading for his life when Vic returns and crashes the car into the gunman. Oz gets in and tells him to drive off without Sophia. Now he's in it and Vic can't leave. Yeah, Vic's in it. In it to win it. Yeah, this is a good way to end the episode. Again, a a cliffhanger ending. You kind of want to see what happened. I would like to see the uh, Moroni and Falcone connection there. Would like to see them have what their conversation's like. Hopefully we get that in the next episode. Uh, But this episode, I think, was really good characterization of Vic. We get a lot of his uh, post-traumatic stress stuff from the accounts of the ending of the 2022 Batman movie. That opening sequence, which probably be my favorite scene of the episode, uh, very awesome, awesome sequence because again, it, it portrays it in a way that you don't necessarily realize it's going to happen until you see an explosion. And it's like, oh wait a second, what? Oh, everything ties back to this this world, and you notice Fix stutter a lot more because he's struggling with that a lot a lot in this he's episode. Just stressed. Right? He's just a little stressed. That's all it is. But also, uh, Oz gives him his, his respect. He's like, hey, don't let anybody talk to you like that. 
you're a person mm. let, let them speak let you speak type of thing so uh, i liked that that the budding relationship even though it's like a tough fatherly love position because he's really like well you're my guy you're, you're my driver you're my bag man you know you're my goose so to speak in this situation so the uh seeing their relationship kind of budding is great um the sophia and oz stuff is also really compelling and they stuff with the triads is also it's very interesting we get a third gang third uh gang slash mob involved here so who's working who and who's not getting cut they're cut so uh that's that's the questions we're asking each other good stuff well, and, and sophia mentioned several others that uh mm -hmm. they potentially could go to if they wanted to yeah because there's can... several villains if they like black mask could be a villain they could there's several different like Batman villains that they could if they wanted to introduce. I don't I think they don't want to jam pack everything prematurely shoot your load here with all the villains here uh, with all that. Yeah. Anyway, we're going to keep going. Uh, yeah, this is a uh, this episode is a lot of fun and mm -hmm. it is very uh, intense. Um, definitely one that that packs a lot more in than the episodes before this one it did kind of feel like it could go on and on and on. And it felt like it, there were several spots it could end, but then it's like, no, we got one more thing to do. Oh no, 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 no. We got one more thing to do. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I think, I think Vic really shines in this episode, like the, this episode more than anything else. He's the main character of this episode and everyone mm -hmm. else is kind of, is kind of working around him, okay. which I think is really cool. He's got a really interesting story. Once you learn about the whole story, and and see exactly what's going on mm -hmm. um yeah the sophia is just so damn good like i that character is so much fun and watching her work everything and i mean she's the only one that can kind of work oz she uh she also can keep up with him like the the scene with uh where they sit down with link and <laughs> i don't know fang i know link um and <laughs> and oz is just rolling his bs and she's just like all right i guess this is this is the story we're going with so i'm gonna keep going with it and just kind of go and she can lay it on right with them. And they are a great team mm -hmm. when they're not stabbing each other in the back. Yeah. I kind and, of interested to see what he did. That's what I would really like to know. Right. Yeah. I'm sure we're yeah. going to get there eventually. Um, but yeah, the, seeing Oz warm up to Vic also, but then also like snap on him when he needs to that so many interesting dynamics and uh relationships that are playing out here it's uh it's a lot of fun this episode mm -hmm. is so much fun agreed definitely agree well what's your best scene there terry oh there there's several here um but i i would say since like the 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 focus of the episode is Vic. My I'm, I'll say the best scene is the um the encounter between Vic and Oz in the bathroom. Mm -hmm. Good call. And and th there's several scenes between the two of them you could go with. You can go with this one. You can go with them sitting down at the restaurant where they mm -hmm. pour one out for his dad. Uh, there there's a lot of different ones you can go with, but this is the one where it all finally comes to a head. This is the one where he finally you know he can't hide anymore. He's got to he's got to step out and be like, no, that the, should I even be here? Is this what I should be doing? My father would be ashamed if I if he were alive to see what I've become. And. But I don't think I can leave. And and Oz freaks out, like, what do you think? I'm? You think you're my prisoner or something? It's like everything I've done for you and all you can see is the gun to your head. Is mm -hmm. this not you're doing this because you want to now you're not doing this because I'm making you. And if, if that was the case, this would have been over a long time ago. Yeah. And the way that all plays out, it's, it's heartbreaking, but it's 
not just for for Vic realizing who he's become and who he is, but Oz, you're realizing he's come to kind of care for the kid too, but he doesn't know how to yeah. show it. And you get so much out of those guys just from that one encounter where everything is finally laid out on the line and here's everything that everything that's at play and let's just throw it out there and see what happens. Yeah, that's, that's a great scene. I, I like the whole confrontation thing that he's like, I knew you were going to, I knew you were going to leave. Uh, you're not going to leave. Uh, yeah. I love, I really like that, that sequence. It sets up with like this really chaotic, like club sequence where he like, He's freaking out because he's tripping out. It's like, did he take the drug? Oh like, what, yeah, what's going that. on? What's going mm-hmm. on with that? But that that was kind of trippy too. Then he goes to the bathroom and has that great scene with the penguin Oz. There, um, that's a great one. I I really like the opening, but that thing that's kind of the start of the um, of Vic's journey here. Um, but mm-hmm. I, I think my favorite scene. I, th- I had to go with Vic at the um, at the restaurant with Oz because I that yeah. I, like, that was where he like. Oz is like defending the guy, it's like his his stutter's coming out, and the waiter's trying to be like kind of a, a douche to him, uh, cutting him off. Uh, but he's like, "No, hey, this guy's speaking here. Like, no, like let him finish. Like, and uh, he's like, don't take that from anybody. Like, you're you're you know, you're not just a per, a placeholder. You're you're there. So I I, I like to the whole connection. I think they're understanding each other." And hearing about like, I don't think my dad's ever been in a nice restaurant, but he uh, cooks a lot of good Spanish food. And hearing his family's story of two characters that were just introduced were taken away so quickly, but they are so such interesting characters at, at the same time, which is it was really cool. So I like that the diner sequence, and then of course we get the setup with Tina and Vidi, right, right in the restaurant too. Yeah, and I I love how Oz kind of recognizes in there that. You know, honest people like like Vic's parents are the ones that should have everything because they do everything right and never get ahead. You have to become the criminal if you actually want to get ahead in life. And that's what's uh that that's yeah. like planting those seeds in Vic that end up turning into what he does at the end. Yeah. Um in a way that he probably didn't realize before so true good point uh, so, so the other ones i had written down i had uh i also had the end with uh sophia and oz mm-hmm. where where uh sophia finally confronts him and i uh, the end of it finally comes out of i don't know how to trust you and he's like well let me keep showing you how and then what's the next thing like, that happens? It's like, oh, I've been double crossing you this entire time and I'm going to leave you for dead while I run. <laughs> 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 like freaking leave her. When in doubt, Oz is always going to pick his own self-preservation. So I that was. It, it couldn't have played out any more perfectly to show who Oz actually is and who he always will be. Yeah. I like that. And then the the other one I had down was the opening. Yeah, the opening. Just, great. And, and when you realize, oh, this is a flashback, and this is oh, and there go there goes his family. Oh man! And then you realize you understand exactly where everything's at. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like it. Good call. Yeah, those are great scenes. Those are what I had down too. Something like who's that. the who's the douchebag of the episode? I have three people down. Even uh, the waiter was not originally my douchebag, but I did refer to him as a douchebag, which I think yeah, that's oh, a good well, call. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go with uh, Squid. Nah, go that's with... why I don't do. <laughs> yeah, Squid. Squid was like that uh, gang leader or whatever that was like his dad didn't want um, fix dad didn't want him to hang out with, and he shows up mm-hmm. with the booze like, hey, booze is here. And they, him and his girlfriend, go away. But yeah, Squid probably be the the douche, one of the douchebags of this episode. Yeah, that's who I had down to. I mean, that that that's kind of an obvious one. I mean, if there's a guy who's so bad, I mean, yeah, his name is Squid, but he's so bad that when he shows up, you don't even say a word to him; you just walk away. Like that. That is. That's all you need to know. That's all Mm -hmm. you need to know right there. Uh, and so the waiter is another great one that you can go with. 
um, and played French bistro waiter played by Greg Bala. Mm, and great uh, douchebag name too. I mean, I think he was fine, but Oz made him look like a like a douche. Yeah, um, yeah. The Gotham off of the police officer too. Oh, oh really? yeah. Okay, let's talk about that real quick. So when that happened, I was like, "Oh my god, here we go. He's gonna get freaking in trouble because because uh, he's in this nice car and he's a young kid. Did he steal it? And of course, he steals his money. But that was a really good improvised line. And he's like, uh, "I didn't have any money." <laughs> he's like, "Oh, he took it," and then he oh, shares that. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. He shares that line. He's like, oh, yeah, you said that. Oh, yeah. And he, and he took all your money. Oh, well, that's, this is life, kid. Uh, that's the price <laughs> of business. <laughs> the price of and just, I was like, oh, yeah, he's not going to pay him back. He's like, well, you lost your money. That's not my problem. Mm hmm. Yeah. Uh, may, maybe next week he actually gets that 2000 that he that he asked for. Maybe. we'll see. Uh, No, but I like where your head's at. Yeah. Uh, so how, that's, that's good. Good. Stick yeah. man award. Those two Sicilian brothers. <laughs> Sixty years ago, they jizzed all over a boot. Yeah, and now I got I got Maronis and Falcones, and uh, yeah, goes way back. Sixty years ago, two Sicilians they jizzed on a boot. Now, yeah, what a being, what a boom, or whatever he says. I, I don't know. So I guess those two Sicilian brothers. I don't know. That's all I had. <laughs> I got Vic. I mean, yeah. Well, Oh, Grace yeah, Yella yeah. is is quite the girl, and it's quite the catch. And yeah, he he, you can tell he's he's got some confidence around her that he doesn't have anywhere else. I I think I think he's he's quite the quite the yeah. stick man in this. Yeah, he definitely has. Yeah, he's got the yeah, got the he's got the eye of a certain young lady. So that's uh yeah, good call, good call. All right, the best new face of the episode. The Feng Shao, Francois Chao. Feng yeah. Shao. Yeah. From, did you look uh, this guy the, up? I knew who he was right away. Oh, you did? Yeah. I watched Lost. He was in 17 episodes Lost. of that. Yeah. Lost, Lost. He was a big, he was the guy on the tape. The tape See, they yeah, find I never watched Lost. Lost so and then also, I watched it. and also, he is the shredder in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2. And then, of course, he was in he the sideshow of Barry. So he was in Teenage Yes. Two. He, he's he was in three episodes of Barry um, as Bong, which I had to try and remember who that was. And then <laughs> I don't remember who Bong. Yeah. He he was one of the guy. I, I looked it up. He was one of the silo guys. Oh, that makes sense. OK, he he, he, he like was that. he was a part of that whole. I, I think he was. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. OK, so remember, remember in the in the fourth season, uh, Hank and um and what's his name? Uh, oh gosh, I'm losing it. Hank and his guy. Um, gosh, dang it, Cristobal. Hank and yeah. Cristobal get in with like with like another uh, gang to be the protection, and he's like one yep, of, I, like the head of them. Gotcha. Oh yeah, that's and, right. And they, yeah, and I know then, who you're talking about now. Then they get dropped down the silo. Yeah, the Dave and Buster's. Mm -hmm. Oh, the Dave and Buster's meeting. The Dave and Buster's meeting. That's yeah. what it was. Yeah. <laughs> Dave and Buster's meeting. Anyway. Uh, it's, yeah. Back there. Yeah. Feng Shao, yeah. Francois Shao. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's, uh, yeah, he's good. Uh, right. I was like, oh, yeah, of course he's in, in the show. Yeah. Of course mm -hmm. he is. And yeah. And, and he, he's, he plays it well. He plays it well. It was either going to be this guy or it's going to be the guy, the, it was going to be uh, Michelle Yeoh's father and everything everywhere all at once. The guy in the wheelchair. So it's going to either be him or, <laughs> or this guy. It's going to be either two Asian actors. Yeah. So I don't know. One of, one of them got to be in there. One of them. What was the best weapon of the episode? Other than Bliss, um, it's Feedy's phone. Feedy's phone. Yes. <laughs> His phone. Is the best weapon in here. He's like, oh yeah, oh yeah, and he cracks. He uh, puts the phone so forcefully down the guy's throat that he cracks the screen. Like the yep. screen protector is cracked. Like that was. <laughs> he's like, yeah. Everyone knows they just have you around for parties and drinks. That's where you're most useful. No one trusts your loyalty or your brains because the penguin's only there for laughs or something like that. 
that's that's a uh, uh when he called him the penguin i was like oh he uh don't call him that's those are fighting words there kid uh-huh yeah <laughs> There you savage, go. The savage bird came out of him. I think the only other weapon you could say was uh, uh, Oz's car. Yeah, that's that Oz's car. Yeah, the 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 Grinch mobile. Yeah, it's plum. Mm-hmm. Sorry, plum, plum, plum. Yeah, the plum car. Leather, leather interior. Yeah. 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 Now that that's the Maroni that, didn't use her gun yet, so you could also say you know water from what the Riddler did in the flashback. Water, water. Yeah, ah. good, call. good call. Yeah, I like All Katie's right. Mona. That's the best one. <laughs> that is the best one. That that might be the best one so far. Mm-hmm. Uh, the best callback. Okay. So obviously, Batman twenty twenty two with the Riddler stuff. Mm-hmm. Obviously, that's that's. So I don't. This is what could probably happen, actually, but. Uh, if if this bliss thing is off of mushrooms, which is a plant, is Sophia not the hangman, but is she poison ivy? Ooh. So, and if it was found at Arkham, which she's had her own cell in Arkham, and they use this, could this also have given the Joker his maniacal laugh and made him kind of trip out and insane too that could be something because they're both there at the same time that you know who knows but that's just a theory of also i, I was thinking about that that what the bliss was and I, so i had some time after the episode and i was kind of i'm like it was it's a theory that other people had too so this the poison ivy thing is something that is very possibly she could be interesting so interesting who uh if that i i, I don't know if i It'd be interesting to at least introduce that version of the character, not like the Uma Thurman version. That would be ridiculous. But uh, having a more kind of <laughs> grounded kind of reality where she's actually like a mob boss and she, I don't know, has a green thumb. It, it, very interesting. It's weird that it is mushrooms with like this this fun like bleeding fungus stuff on it. It's kind of interesting, but it's, it's mushrooms with chicken pox. That's what it looked like. Yeah, it did. Either that or mushrooms with rubies growing out of it. True. Uh, my, I, I, all right. So the callback I thought of as I was watching this, and I didn't realize it till the end. So you've got that flashback at the beginning. And then when you first meet uh, Grace Yell in the present and she find and she comes in, it's like, Oh, where have you been? You've been missing. And the, one of the first things she says is, have you seen Cal? Hmm. Because he went missing around the same time. And it wasn't until later that I went, oh, Cal's the guy who yeah, was stealing was the car cool. with them that they found and shot dead in front of Vic saying this was one of your buddies, wasn't it? And then pop, pop, and Cal's all gone. Well, I thought I thought that what, what was the guy that when um, Oz was naked? The kid that they found. That's what it was. That's what it was. Yeah. The the kid yeah. that um that they found when they were well, trying Sophia to say killed. that he did it all. Like episode yeah. one, yeah. That and was in the- episode one. And that was it Sophia that pulled the trigger on that? I don't remember. It was yeah, she was in that scene because the other guy was using the piano wire on his his, his right. body. I think it was Castillo that yeah, was using the piano there. wire on him. Yeah. Something uh, like one of those guys. Yeah. But no, that that was that took me a second. I'm like, oh, oh, that's why he's missing, because yeah, he's he's, he's the ultimate missing. Yeah, he's gone. Yeah, mm-hmm. he's disappeared. He gone. Uh, and, and why? Why have to be Cal? Why couldn't have been Squid? Because I mean, yeah, yeah. screw Squid. Uh huh. Favorite minor character or henchman? I've got Doctor Bloom. Doctor Blow. Yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right, oh, yes, dude. <laughs> yeah. He, this is our chemist. Very different kind of chemist than Heisenberg. He's like, what are um, you brewing up in this place? Oh, we got we got a we got red cook. We got some chili to pee, yo. <laughs> oh, don't don't touch the mushrooms. Okay, don't touch them. It's like mushrooms are around everywhere. Not not these mushrooms. No, yeah. Doctor Bloom. He's my favorite henchman. Yeah, it's a good call. As Doctor Bloom, great. 
uh link the link shot Sai, link Sai, robert lee mm. long he's pretty cool i think he could borderline be a stick man too honestly. oh absolutely yeah so i only know link i don't know the thing the thing so, link he he looks oh. like like if like he is not that far off from simu leo yeah yeah i know but <laughs> i thought too <laughs> Like you look at his profile picture on IMDb, and he looks like, like if Simu Leo grew grew like a goatee, and tried to be a gangster, yeah, he it's would like, oh. he would look a little bit like this guy. Like one got Barbie and one got Penguin. That's pretty much how it went. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much. Yeah. All right. Uh, the best line. You do anything stupid, I'll I'll sense it. That's great. That's what I don't do. Do anything stupid, I'll sense it. Oh. <laughs> the other, oh, no. the other good one is, uh, is what do I do if she asks me a, about Alfredo or or Castillo? He goes, tell her you had a hand in her in their in both their killings. See how that goes. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah. yeah. Like, hey, the man's speaking him. Let us let him finish. I've said that before, but uh, also to like when she like subtly puts down his apartment. It's like, oh, tacky. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the fireplace. Yeah, it's good. I just realized this whole time my my banner was wrong. I got the line wrong. It wasn't shame cells. It's trauma cells. That was another good line uh, that that Sophia had at the end. Trauma cells, but not your banner. Shame on my banner. Sell. LVP is my banner for screwing up the line this whole time. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that that's another great scene is the scene where they where Sophia makes the pitch and mm -hmm. has to, you know, talk to um, talk to what's his name? Um, talk to Feng Xiao and be it's like we have a history and I popped a bottle of champagne the day your father died. She goes and as soon as I got out of Arkham, I danced on his grave. <laughs> <laughs> we have more in common than you think and then go, talking through arkham and how it all connects and how it and how the you know it's a community that needs a release and that's what's going to make this such a big hit and there there oh uh, there's so much good stuff in there and it all ends with the her saying trauma sells and she's almost sad about the whole thing that mm -hmm. her trauma helped sell help make a, them a lot of money yeah that is true all right. Did you find any problems with this episode? So, yeah. So Vic and his girl go to are at Oz's house and they're drinking beers. I could have sworn was that a Modelo label, but I've never seen a tall Modelo. Like that was like mm. the beer bottle was a lot bigger than a typical stub stubby Modelo. So that was kind of weird. I don't know if it was like a relabel or just like a Gotham kind of brew or something like that, but yeah, I don't, I don't know. The, that was kind of weird. And then, um, to the, the price for their drugs, like, yeah, we're, we're selling for 60. I was like, wow. I was like, it's pretty good for the first day. I was like, you're, you're basically passing them out. So there's 200. The guy gave me 200 and he gave him three vials. So you're selling for 60 bucks a vial essentially. So, that's not i'm like man that's for like a comparing walter white's distribution they made a lot more money than what this bliss is selling well for. yeah but this is this is a brand new drug that no one knows what it is and it's a trial run right you want oh, people to actually it. buy it and try it true that's not bad and then the more, like, they, oh. the more they try it the more the price was getting bumped up it's like oh you like that well it's gonna be a little more for the second round and yeah, true, so true. Give them a little taste, just a little taste. Mm -hmm. Like the thing when you go to Heisenberg, I mean, meth is meth. It's yeah, just that his is his is the blue. best meth, and so once it and got the choices. reputation that it was the best, it, yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, good um, point. yeah, I didn't have any. I didn't come up with any problems. Let's talk about the most relatable moment. Talking, having conversations with yourself, like this, psych you up. Like, oh yeah, this is how my, this is what I'm gonna say. This is what they're gonna say back to me. I'm gonna. It's like, no, nah, I'm screwed. <laughs> but that's, that's relatable. I've done that. I've like, like had fake conversations, like 
fake interview like question like stuff like this is what i'm gonna say here or like even the even when we do our podcast too like when we like do our big episodes like okay so i just saw this movie how am i gonna review it so i like talking to it i like driving my car just like talking my way through a conversation and then i'm like ah throw that out the window ah yeah, just <laughs> go go with the fly go what you feel there you go so i like yeah. that that's good uh i've got a couple things written down the first one is um after Vic was talking about his dad the idea of there's the things you have to do and there's the things you want to do mm. and there's always the balance between the two right so I thought that was that was good and the other which is kind of like the theme of the entire episode is this idea of feeling like you have to live up to or live down to expectations oh, expectations yeah that's a good call um, cause you got Vic who feels like he's got certain expectations that he has to live, live up to like what his parents expected from him, what Oz expects from him, what his girl expects from him. You have Sophia who is living with this, this persona, this legend of the hangman. And she has to, she uses it as best she can. And, and, and especially in the conversation to get the drugs sold to the triads, she has to sell herself. It's like, no, the, this is, this is what it is. And Oz goes through the same thing, right? He's, he's got expectations of who he is and how to live up to it and how not to live up to it. And um, yeah, just this idea of you, you feel like you have to live up to certain expectations. You have to be someone you maybe aren't because that's who everyone expects you to be. Yeah. Expects you, yeah. That's that's yeah, great, good. That's a good call on that one. Yeah, all all our characters are battling with that as well, and it's like mm -hmm. Sophia is battling with the expectations. Like you're supposed to go to Italy. Like either you're gonna go to Italy or I'm gonna say you went to Italy. That's what Vinny's saying. That's, that's what I'm yeah. gonna tell. That's where I'm gonna tell everyone you went. That was yeah. a great line too. Yeah. That's a good one. But like, and it's confirmed too. Vinny is sleeping with Luca's wife. Luca's wife. It was Luca's wife. I messed yeah. that up last time. And, so I, and, like, and they showed it in the they showed it in the flashback or the previously on the penguin. I'm like, yep, I got that wrong. <laughs> <laughs> well, I it goes yeah. so fast. Some of this dialogue goes so fast you can't catch everything. You can't comprehend of, it. Yeah. Yeah. Like I'm taking notes on this. I'm like, I'm still trying to write down notes from a minute ago, and you've just gone, you've you've jumped two scenes since then. Yeah. I gotta catch true. up. Uh yeah just a fast moving show for sure. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, LVP, I think LVP. What the hell did Tina do to get a favor like that? Asked of her from Oz. Like what did, what's the, what did Oz ask Tina? Like what did Tina ask Oz to do that? He said, okay, well I'll do this, but I, you owe, I owe you a, you owe me a favor. And like, it's not because like, I got blackmail on you because I don't think he would reveal that to her. But Vinny no, that knows. totally is. It could be. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, he's like, he, you're not gonna he, like he's it. A, he's you're not gonna like, and he's and he says you. Here's what you've got to do, or else I tell your husband mm. that that you're sleeping with Vidi, and mm -hmm. because the only way they're able to do that is he tells her. Go sleep with him. Let me know next time you're sleeping with him so we can crash the party because we need something out of him. But it has to happen that day because yeah. it all happens in a day. So it's like you have mm -hmm. to make this happen. You have to have a meetup. Uh -huh. But it's like that's uh, it's so I guess Tina would be kind of Tina, Tina and even Viddy would be falling here as like LVP candidates. Yeah. Yeah. So you could say that. Yeah. All right, my my LVP, I I want PTSD, which is yeah, a, it's such fun. a great a scene that's shot so so well mm -hmm. of just the lights kind of flashing and yeah, good and use of like feeling, the environment, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and just how that club setting brought that out of him and yeah, so LVP is that which leads to my MVP. My MVP is Roxy, who is one of the girls, and she's the one that that to tries to dance with Vic Again. and then helps him clean up and like, dude, put it, pull it together here, man. Um, she's kind of got a little bit of a thing for him and she's watching mm -hmm. out for him, which is, which is cool. And if she hadn't been, he would have been screwed 
big time after he had his little his little panic attack there. So mm. uh, so my MVP, I'm going Roxy there. Those girls are great. And we haven't mentioned any of them yet. So, uh, yeah, I like how you mentioned. Yeah, that good call on Roxy there. I think that's that's probably the the, the best answer on that. Um, I, I want to say um, Oz's car, because for withstanding such a like a high speed incident like that and not like and still running for the most part, it's not running well, but it's running like I guess. say, yeah, it's a pretty cool car. It's it's pretty. I got some tough stuff. We got a little uh, it's got a little uh, noise to it, a little rattle to it now, but it, it's still <laughs> it's still running. It's still running. And, and I got even say, Sophia behind. <clears throat> I gotta say too, probably Oz's suit because he he ditched the dark attire that he's known for, and he went white. A white. It's a bold move. It's, it's a bold move, Cotton. Let's see how it pays out for him. Uh, yeah, really bold, uh, bold look here. And yeah, that's uh, it's a, it's it's a good it's a good look. It's, it it's a, a that is a good, good look. look. I will say bit. though, like LVP is his look at the beginning of the episode where he's got the jacket over the gray t shirt. I mean, what is he even trying to pull off there? He looks like Scott Calvin or something. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. So, all right. Well, we're going to talk about what we think is coming up next. Uh, I know we're, we're slightly behind on this whole, this whole penguin thing, right? I mean, we're recording this soon after the finale ended. So if you're catching up with us or if you're just listening in to, to see how dumb we sound, trying to figure out what's going to happen because you've already watched it all. That's yeah. great. Um, we're, we're a little late to to a, to the party, but I'm glad. Welcome to the party, part pal. Yeah, yeah. Welcome to the party, pal. All right. So our, our POI, our put on ice count. Oz remains at three. Sophia is still at one. Luca is still at one. Irvod will forever remain at one because he became someone else's kill count. Uh, Vic is up to 0.5. So he lost his negative 0.5 and I'm giving him a whole, a whole kill count for uh, crushing the, the gunman. Get crushing uh, the guy's knees. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I, there, there, there's a good chance or maybe I just give him a half. I'll just give him a half and give put him, him back, half. get him back to zero. He is back yeah. to, to level. And, and there cool. are two, too debatable still from the last episode. Let's give the Riddler at least three. For three characters that we for sure have names for Vic's family. The Riddler. The Riddler. His kill count is going to be yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he killed. <laughs> An undisclosed amount. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. His kill count is, is yes. yes. Yeah. Is yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's All right. I can remember that. What's happening next? I thought of this too, uh, is that obviously I mentioned the poison ivy, ivy so I think that's kind of interesting. But then I also you get with like what Vic is like. Did Vic have this? Did he take it? I don't think he would have taken it. Maybe he got a whiff of it. Maybe it's like a scarecrow thing where you're seeing your worst nightmares, which would be your uh, so you're hallucinating a sequence of events that's happening, which would be kind of like those flashes that he's seeing at the club. So I don't I think don't th I don't think he got any of it. Not not with how Sophia was describing what it actually. Maybe does. it's just, maybe it's just the uh, maybe it's just the noise. I just would like to the like to tie in. Nerves. Yeah. So like Scarecrow, I'm like, yeah, we've seen that done before already. Uh, we haven't seen, you know, something. This this is a little different. So. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think that I want to see uh, Maroni versus Falcone in uh, in the alley, the Rumble in Gotham. I would I kind of would like to see what happens with that conversation because you know Oz left and Nadia there. versus Sophia is that what you're is that what you're yeah. talking about? Yeah, yeah. I kind of want to see uh, yeah the battle in the Bronx, the battle in uh, Gotham. There, I kind of like to see that. Uh, I think Viddy's time is short, uh, very short lived. I think he's going to be strung up by his boots pretty soon, um, and. Yeah, I think it's only going to be time where Luca will probably be in the next episode kind of getting revealed that, you know, that what the double cross plus also that you're going to the triads too. So there's another gang, another kind of drug out there too. So there's going to be a power play for the Falcone name as well. So I think it definitely could happen. But then with Oz and, and Vic trying to get the placeholders, now you're kind of like, you're coming, he has to come from behind now because now she definitely doesn't trust Oz. 
So, well, not only that, needed. but Oz kind of has now made enemies with everyone. With everybody. Now, the, yes. now that the Maronis have figured out what's going on. You got the Maronis pissed at him. You've got Sophia pissed at him, and the Falcone family is going to be pissed at him. Um, he has no friends. I mean, his best friend now might be the Triads. Uh, we're not we're which, discrediting Vic. He came back for him. Well, I mean, well, Vic is in Vic is in the literally in the same boat. He's in the same car as yeah, as Vic's Oz. girlfriend doesn't like Oz. There's another person doesn't like him. Yeah, there you go. So, so Oz went from you know working every angle to every angle just crashed down on him. And how is he going to eke his way yeah. out? He always has the right thing to say. But uh, how's he gonna how's he gonna talk his way out of this one? Because the like the one thing that couldn't happen just happened. Just happened. And now he's kind of screwed. Mm -hmm. And he yeah, messed I mean, it up even worse by leaving Sophia behind. Eh. Or maybe it was for the best. Maybe he said leave her behind because she's gonna want to kill me because the Maronis just came and admitted that I've been trying to work for them. Yeah, that is true. That is true. So, and how long is it going to be before everyone realizes that he's the one that, you know, has been killing everybody? Yeah, good point. Good point. Because I think mm. Nadia knows. I think Nadia knows. So we've been watching you for a week. Or did they? Did they say weeks? Um, I don't know if it said how long they've been watching him, but we've been following you around. I think okay. was the main mm -hmm. main idea there. Yeah, good call. Well, that's kind of what our breakdown is today. Where, uh, yeah, yeah. Only time will tell what the next episode will bring us, but that hopefully you guys do like this our breakdown of the bliss episode for the penguin episode three <laughs> out of bliss. I make sure you guys like share and subscribe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Check out our podcast where you find your movie podcast at almost sideways movie podcast. Again, my name is Adam and that's Terry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs>